Hi, I'm George. There's a lot of confusion about the lasso tool here, Photoshop Elements lasso tool, and that's that tool right down here. Part of it is that there are three tools. We have the regular lasso, the magnetic lasso, and the polygonal lasso tool. So the question is, when do you use which one? Which one is the best to use? I'll be going over all of that in this video. There's also a lot of options over here. We have the new option, add, subtract, and intersect, and this anti-aliasing thing. I'll tell you what that's all about as well. And finally, we have this feathering option over here, right-hand side, and the refine edge option. So let's take a look at this and when I personally would choose one over the other. I tend to go back and forth between these two most of the time, and I don't use the magnetic that much, but it is good in certain circumstances. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll take a look at these. But first, make sure you hit that like button and click on subscribe and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. The link for that is right down there in the description. Okay. I have three pictures up here. This first one, here's a second one here, the butterfly on it, and here is a third one with kind of a very difficult selection problem in there. We'll start off with this. Now, here's where I might be using the standard lasso tool. Now, the lasso tool makes a freehand selection like that. And to finish it off, you always go back to your starting point or close to it, and it will then close that down. Now, normally this is going to be set on new over here. So if I click in it, it's going to deselect, and then I'll make a new selection again you know, whatever like that. And this holds true for all of these lasso tools. If I go here to the add T selection, I can then make a new selection over here. And it's gonna add that section into my existing selection. The next one over here, the subtract is the exact opposite. If I come in here and make a selection like that, it's going to subtract that part from that selection. So these two allow you to modify or clean up an existing selection. Now the last one here, I almost never use this just because it's kind of an odd tool. And that's the intersection. And what that does is if I make a selection like this, just overlapping it again, and I let go, only the overlap remains. So that's what those four options do. The anti-aliasing just smooths down the pixels along your selection edge, and I just always leave mine selected. Okay, normally when you're starting off with a selection, you always start here with a new selection on that side. Okay, let's just go back here. Now, the reason why I would use this is if I'm planning on doing something else with that selection after I've made it. Two of those possibilities are the refine edge tool. Say I wanted to remove the background around the screw and I wanted to use a refine edge around her hair, then that would be a good use for this particular tool. The other one is if I wanted to use the content aware fill and remove somebody or something from an image, again, this is a good tool to use. Let's do that content aware fill. I'll just come in here, I'll make just a little selection like this. Now with the content aware fill, you want to be a little ways away. You don't want to be right up against your image or whatever it is you're trying to remove. So yourself a little bit of space around it doesn't need to be too much just a little bit of space and this tool allows me to be pretty fast about this and just overlap your beginning spot so i've made a basic freehand selection using the regular lasso tool so i'll go up to edit come down to fill selection and content aware is the option right there choose okay and that then fills up with content from elsewhere in the image and it gives you a pretty good job as you can see i would need to come back here and fix that rock a little bit down there bit of clone stamping or something to get that dip in there, but it does a real nice job. And that's one time when I would use this particular tool. I'll use the control Z here just to back out of that. And then to deselect, the easy way is just control D, keyboard shortcut for a deselect. All right, let's say I wanted to make a selection around this girl and I wanted to do a nice selection around the hair. That's a good use for the refine edge tool. So again, I use the same tool and I'll just make a selection right around the person. Now, if I'm doing a refined edge, I may be coming in a lot closer this time. I'm not going to be actually touching the edge anywhere, but it's gonna be a much closer selection. I don't wanna have that much excess stuff with this particular tool. So it's a lot closer than I just did for that content aware fill. Let's go back here to the beginning like that. So I now have a close in selection. I can then click on that refine edge button right here. And then using my brush tool, I can brush right along this edge and Photoshop Elements goes in and re-examines that edge inside of that area I'm brushing into and tries to make a much tighter, much better selection. So even though I'm not doing a careful selection with that selection tool, I'm letting the Refine Edge option here come in and solve that part of that for me. So let us just cancel that out. And again, Control D to deselect that selection. And I'll put this back to fill screen right here. Okay, back to our tools again. The last option down below here is the feather, and this creates a softness on an edge. 
Right now it's at feather zero. If I can show this real fast, I'm just going to make a real quick selection around here. I'm not going to be real careful about this one at all. Like that. There's a selection. I'll go up here to layer and come down to new and via copy. And that copies everything in that selection onto a new layer. If I now hide that, notice how this has a hard edge on that selection. Okay, let's just go back here again. I'll delete that layer. And that's where the feathering comes in. Now to use the feathering, you have to set your feathering number before you use the tool. So I'll set this up to a pretty high number. I think 20 pixels might be nice. You can type it in or just use the slider control on that. Either way works. There we go. I'll do the exact same thing. So I set my feathering before I use the tool. And we'll come around like this and make this selection. There we go. Same trick again, layer, new, new layer via copy. Looks the same, let me hide that background. And notice now the edge is soft or feathered. So that's what that feather option is. It gives you a soft edge in here. And it's real nice if you are clipping something out and you want it to fade into something else or fade into a different background. That's the easy way to do that. Okay, let's just get rid of that layer. So that takes care of looking at the standard lasso tool right here and all of our standard options over here on the right hand side. Now these options remain the same for the other two lasso tools. They're just used a little bit differently. Let's now go over to the butterfly here, our butterfly picture. This is a good example of where the magnetic lasso might do a good job. Let's say I didn't want to use refined edge on this, which I could, but so I wanted to have just a nice hard edge sharp selection. The easy way to do that is with the magnetic lasso tool. You have a lot of adjustments in here with contrast, frequency, and feather. I'll leave my feathering at zero. Frequency is how far apart dots are placed. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Contrast is looking for the contrast or difference between the two edges. Now, some spots like right down here is going to have a hard time finding this spot right in here. So we'll come back and we'll clean that up and we'll clean it up right down here and over here to need some cleanup. But up along here, it's going to grab that very easily. So let's see how this works. I'll just start right up here and I'll come in close. Click and then just pull your mouse along that edge. Now see how close those dots are together? That is the frequency in there. Now, the higher the frequency, the higher the number, the more dots you get and the more accurate this is going to be. And if I go in like this, it's going to give me an inaccurate selection. So I have to be going pretty close along that edge. But it does need to be perfect because Photoshop Elements will take care of linking it up with that exact edge as long as I'm close to it. So it's kind of like using the standard lasso tool with a bit of built-in help. And I'll go up into here and across like that. We'll go clear around and see how this looks. When this is finished again. I'm trying to be right along that edge. So I'm trying to be very careful on this one, but I'm not having to be perfect. So the perfection comes in with the Photoshop elements and that magnetic part of this. And on these kind of selections, take your time. Don't go too fast. If you go too fast, you begin making mistakes. So just work clear around. Now with this tool, if I want to move this someplace, I actually can let go of the mouse for a second. I can move my cursor around and then click and hold again. And it's going to begin to place down those dots. So we actually can do it that way. I'm just going to go around the head. I'm not going to bother with those antenna for this demonstration. And back to the starting point. If you get close, just double click. And there's our selection. And you can see it did a pretty good job of staying right against that. It missed it up here. It missed it down there where we did that miss on purpose. I actually found that pretty well down below here. And right hand side, it kind of messed up right there where we did a little example. So pretty nice job. Now you can fix those things. Zoom in a little bit right here. And the nice thing about this, I can go back in and clean it up by going back to our tool. And I'll go over here and add, let's just go right along that edge like that. And just following the edge where it was missing it. And then down and around and back to where you started at. Double click and that should finish that off and that gets that edge for us. And up along here someplace with a big problem right there. We need to subtract that. So again, we'll go to the subtract section and I'll start right here and I'll go right along that edge to get my edge again. And the magnetic lasso finds it for me. And then out and around the part I want to get rid of and back to my beginning spot. Double click right there and that takes care of it. Now you may have to go back and forth a bit like right here. I need to go back in add that little bit in. So it may take some back and forth on this to get a perfect edge, but the magnetic lasso makes it a lot faster for you as long as you have a good edge to work with. Something that's really obvious. And this butterfly has really obvious clean edges to work with. Okay, let's go back to our fit screen. There we go. 
So that's where I would use that particular tool, the magnetic lasso, if it will save me time and I need to do a real careful selection that way. I use Control D and deselect. The final tool down here, this is the polygonal lasso tool. And on this one, let's just deselect that. You click a point and then move your mouse and click another point, move your mouse, click another point. So it puts in straight lines between the points that you're clicking. Now, because of this, this is a very accurate tool to use. So I can make real small points. I can make really accurate selections. And then back to your beginning point to close that selection down. Okay, Control D. If I was using it here on the butterfly, I would zoom in on this like that. I might use this tool on things like the antenna here, where I want it to be really, really accurate or it's too thin, and this might cause some problems with the magnetic lasso. It might have a problem. I would do this by hand the hard way with this particular tool. And you can change tools when you're making a selection. Let's say I had the magnetic lasso tool here. I'll just do part of this and I'll make a selection right around in here with this tool up around here, around the head like that. Using this for what it's good at, which is finding those edges for us. And then around this side. Let's say I, I'd finished off that whole butterfly down logo back to the beginning point. There's my selection. I can now change tools to a different tool. Click on add, and I can then use this to add in something else like this leg up here. I can come in and very carefully find that leg right here. This also is nice using the polygonal lasso tool. If you have a very soft edge like this, the magnetic lasso is not going to be able to find that soft edge. So I can come in and eyeball where that should be using the polygonal lasso tool. It takes more time, but it's going to find that edge that I couldn't find the other way and then come inside back around at the beginning again and I'm now added in that selection. So you can change tools when you're doing this. Just finish your selection with one tool, change your tool to a different tool, and then add or subtract with that additional tool. Where I might want to use the polygonal all the time, either it's a really easy or really obvious shape, but I want to have real perfect accuracy, I might use that tool. Or if there's an area where it just can't be selected with any other tool, for instance in here, if I wanted to lighten up this background or change the foreground here, along up in here, I could use that magnetic lasso. It'd be useless down here. Let's say I wanted to keep part of this sand area right along in here. The magnetic lasso is not going to work. The regular lasso is not going to give me a real careful edge along here. So here's where I might want to use a couple of different tools. We'll start off with the magnetic lasso. I'll set this to new. And I'll just go over here on this side and this go along this. And I'll do this first easy part with this tool, just like this. And we'll go clear around. It's going to have a hard time here, but we'll see if I can get close. We might get lucky on this. Sometimes it does. And then down here, I can try to be pretty accurate on that, but it's a little bit weird. Not really perfect. And then up in here and then up around this side. And we're doing a pretty good job in here. Not that bad. There we go, back to the beginning. And there's my selection. Let's say I want to do a better job down here, more controlled down here. I would simply go back again to my polygonal lasso tool. And I'll use the add this time. And I'll start over here, just kind of overlap. And then I'll come around and I'll come in and do the area I want to have, which I wasn't able to find with that magnetic lasso. And also it's a lot smoother, as you can see. And I'll just bring this around over here. You can go outside if you want to. And then back to the beginning again, get close, double click, and that then adds in that section using that polygonal tool. If I wanted to lighten up this background here, right now I have this inner section selected and not the outer section. So I'm going to do a trick here. I'm going to go up to layers, make a new layer, and via copy. So it's now sitting on top. You can see it's right there. And now I can control these separately. We'll go up to layer and new adjustment layer, levels where it says use previous layer, check that, choose OK. I can now control the levels of this one layer up here. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit and increase my contrast, a bit more whites in there. There we go, it's looking a lot better now. It's like a good photograph, close that down. So I've now lightened up that middle section. Now the background down here, real tricky. I don't know if there's any detail in here or not. We'll see what we can get. Same thing, layer, new adjustment layer, levels. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. And I'll first grab the middle control here and bring it over, see if we have any. We have some detail in there. 
So I brought back in some detail, but it's going really washed out. So I'm bringing back in my blacks and we'll go back and forth on those two and see if we can get more light in there without losing my darkest darks. That's helping just a little bit. And there we go. So we've improved this and we've given ourselves some more light showing up here on the cave, making it look more natural, much better photograph than we had previously. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and click on subscribe. And take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.